This morning, The Pigeon Tunnel, a new film by Errol Morris about the life of John le Carre, the former spy turned novelist. Both men, le Carre and Morris, have carved out unique places in our culture with their distinct brand of storytelling. The film gives them both a chance to talk about how lives full of secrets and lies can maybe lead to a little truth. People want a simple story that explains everything. And the ugly truth is that there may be no simple story. And I find it interesting. The Pigeon Tunnel is the name John le Carre used as the working title of his books. Pigeons sent out to fly while hunters try to pick them off. Maybe the way Lacare felt about starting every new novel. Maybe the way an interviewer might feel about talking to someone as smart and famously evasive as Lacare. Am I in a world of fiction? Am I in a world of fact? I really don't think any artist, I don't think he has to explain his work beyond a certain point. If it's raised those questions in you, you're already having a good time. I've never, 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 never had uh, an interview subject who spoke as well as he did. It's unreal. It is unreal. I think that's correct. John le Carre, whose real name was David Cornwell, worked for the British Secret Service and Intelligence Service before he turned to spy novels. His trademark, Cerebral stories, complex characters. Where did it come from? What's the access? A new secret source of mine. The books have been turned into a slew of movies. How did you recognize me, Mr. Gallagher? Oh, Nicky said you were. Russia's answer to the Venus de Milo. And his life was turned into a biography in 2015. David hated the biography. And so that triggered his competitive desire to write his own. Do you think he also hated it because he wasn't in control of it? Sure. I know that feeling. Look at this. <laughs> you want to be in control so bad right now. I do indeed. <laughs> Errol Morris, who also spent time as a private investigator, pioneered a new form of documentary filmmaking starting in the late 1970s with his Interatron which allowed him to interview subjects through a camera lens, like a news anchor uses a teleprompter to read. It's like a bad dream. You want to wake up, but you can't do it. 1988's The Thin Blue Line, investigating the murder of a Dallas police officer, marked the first time Morris experimented with using his voice as interviewer in his films. What was the Saudi ambassador's reaction to this? He wanted reassurance. Since then, Morris has made some of the most heralded documentaries of our time, involving some of our most complicated personalities. Events afterwards showed that our judgment that we'd been attacked that day was wrong. Now we add Le Carre to that list. I'll answer any question you wish me to answer as truthfully as I can. Do you think he was truthful with you? Do I think anybody is truthful with anybody, including themselves? I have a very simple answer to that. No. What is this crazy idea that the purpose of an interview is to hear someone speaking truthfully when we know that people never speak truthfully? There's a very deep and annoying confusion about truth that somehow it's handed over to you. You, know. oh, you, you expect it. Whether you expect it or not, that you're going to get it. I'm not so much interested in how other people see my central figure, my protagonist. I'm interested in how they see themselves. I have never submitted to analysis. I feel if I knew any secrets about myself, I'd deprive myself of writing. One of the things I love about this particular interview is he's constantly telling you that the things that he's telling you are false. Who does that kind of thing? John le Carré. John le Carré. I can see my own life still as a succession of embraces and escapes. 
The Pigeon Tunnel dives deep into Lacare's tortured relationship with his father, a con man who spent his life in and out of prison. Of truth, we didn't speak. Of conviction, we didn't speak. Lacare became a father too, a better one, to Simon and Stephen. Was your dad an easy or hard man to know? He was a, he was a very easy man to be with. Was he an easy man to know? Uh, prob probably not. Was that frustrating for you? I think, it, no, it wasn't frustrating. I mean, I think it was the uniqueness of knowing him was that you recognized that his creative space, his writing space, and the energy and fuel it took to live in those worlds of his imagination was very consuming for him. It wasn't planned this way, but Morris's conversations with Lacare happened just shortly before Lacare died in 2020. Both of them in a room full of mirrors, two masters of interrogation, trying to get each other to reveal themselves. I've never, never had this happen in all of the films that I've made. He says to me, the question you don't really want anyone to ever ask you, who are you? I needed to know who I was talking to. Were you my friend across the fire? Were you a stranger on a bus? Who are you? Who are you? I don't know who I am. How do you answer such a question? And if I can't answer that question, not that I won't, but maybe I can't. Then we'll struggle on and find out who you are. And at the end of the movie, he does answer that question of who he is, in part. Wow. I don't want to spoil the end, but it's very, <laughs> it's very well done. It's on Apple TV now. It just came out yesterday. I watched it on a screener on my phone um, a few weeks ago, but I would say if you can watch it on a bigger screen, do so because it's really beautifully done. He's fascinating. And, and, and you were right. Every word that comes out of his mouth sounds scripted. <laughs> Just oh, he's he's so he's eloquent. The most, most eloquent person I think I've I don't that I've ever heard. And if you watch the documentary, you'll see more of Lacare speaking. It's just I, you just feel like he can just run circles around you. I, I you also love that idea of like why do you expect the truth? Yeah, in the yeah. Interview and it is really it's interesting. an interesting yeah. notion.